your characters in the X Men, who you play, we know that you've been Cyclops has been in this before, but if you could refresh the audiences. Um, yeah, I I play Cyclops. His real name is Scott Summers, and um, he has the ability to fire a concussive beam of force from his eyes if he <laughs> so desires, uh, and to protect uh, people from being involuntarily annihilated, he has to wear this ruby quartz plated visor to uh, kind of harness that energy. And he's like second command to Professor X. He's kind of takes the throne if he ever kicks it, so he's waiting. (laughs) 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 Um, I play a new character uh, named uh, Yuriko Oyama, who is sort of the assistant to Brian Cox's character, the lead bad guy in this film. And um, my mutant name is Lady Deathstrike. And I have have, uh, uh, adamantium claws like, uh, like Wolverine. I think that I think uh, the, the people that I run into on the street, their only complaint about the first film is that it wasn't like enough, so they wanted yeah. more. So I think that this movie is going to give them everything they've wanted and more. I, I think it's just bigger and better on so many different levels. It's it's you know it's more romantic. It's more um, it's there's more action. There's cooler special effects, and I, I know I sound better like fighting. That. Yeah, better fighting <laughs> for her. Anyway. No, she, but I she think me. I think also in the first one they spent a lot of time sort of introducing the characters yeah. because you know a lot of people were not familiar with the X Men comics and they had to sort of you know figure out who everyone was and what they did and all that kind of stuff. And now they're more able to get into the relationships of the characters. I think that's yeah. sort of an and also introduce part of it. new lovely characters. Thank you. You know, I, I think it's not necessarily the comic. I think it's more of the adaptation to the big screen. I think that it's the director's vision. I think that Brian has always seen X Men as um, something that's m- uh, more of a parallel to our everyday life and the things, that, the issues that we deal with in everyday exactly. life. It's, it's the, you know, kind of a metaphor for uh, for all those things and, and dealing with uh, intolerance and discrimination and all that stuff. And I think that the core of the X Men is is about these. Um, Flawed characters and, and the irony that their their flaw is what makes them superior to normal human beings. So anybody who's ever felt like an outcast or like uh, you know discriminated against um, finds refuge in this comic book because these guys you know the outcasts are the superheroes. I think that's why it's been, and it's not been about guys in leotards jumping over buildings and you know right. capturing bad guys with dollar signs on their shirts you know it's <laughs> it's, it's more it's more real than that no but it's like. also i think it's also a, a, a group of people rather than just one person having True. all of yeah, these yeah, yeah. the 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 all of the power it's right. a, a, a whole school of students or a whole school of people with all these different powers and 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 like you said some of them not really knowing how to u- quite use them yet you know it's it's a it makes for a more interesting story i think yeah. I didn't even know I, it existed. <laughs> <laughs> I'd played the video game before in the 80s. Uh, no, I had friends like you. I had friends that were that were into the comic book, but I never could get that format never worked for me. I the the the, the illustration and the little bubbles of, of yeah. text and um, I just didn't there was You don't read them now? No. <laughs> I'd much prefer to see the movies actually. Um, no, I I occasionally, you know, will We'll uh, see, you know, because I think Cyclops just died in the comic books recently. Oh. He's been around since since 1963 when bye it was bye created. Bye-bye, Jimmy. I know. So <laughs> good for the next movie, huh? I know. Yeah. But, no, I don't think anybody in the cast, I can't think of anybody that was ever a big comic book fan or an X-Men yeah. fan. I didn't even know that, that the X-Men comics even existed right. until I saw the first film. Yeah, it's one of those things where, like, everybody knows who Spider-Man is, even if right. you're not a comic book fan. Mm-hmm. But, like, my mother knows who Spider-Man is, but they're like, X-Men, is that... A clothing line from the '80s or something. Right, or like, right, right, you know. right. Well, I, you know, I, I, I really didn't do too much research on the first film. I felt more inclined to do more research, but then Brian Singer kind of stopped that and said, "Look, if you go back, I mean, I, get familiar with your character a little bit, but don't waste time going through all the sagas and all mm-hmm. the, you know, the things because." It, the, the comic's been around for so long that it's branched off in so many different areas and had so many different writers and illustrators, so everyone had their own take on it. And he said, Brian was very adamant about, let the script be your your mm-hmm. you know manual, if you will. And, and um, so we just, you know, that was a great kind of burden taken off of us, that this is Brian's interpretation of the X-Men. Where, you know, so you don't really have to worry about reading all of the comic books and stuff, so. Oh, yeah. that's a good one. Right? You can see through people's clothes. Right. <laughs> you can see behind closed doors. <laughs> see what people good. really do in their houses. <laughs> invisibility as well. It probably would be just as good, maybe then. I don't know. I've always wanted to I kind of feel invisible a lot of times anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's 
not even so a superpower. 